I'm surrounded by fields of cotton in California's San Joaquin Valley. It's one of the top producing agricultural fields in the world. And what we discover here will change the way you think about your favorite old t-shirt. Welcome to Los Banos, California, a place where cotton is king and fields of so-called white gold stretch for miles. I think it's really hard for people to even know where their cotton comes from. And although cotton may look clean, it's anything but. Even if it's only one cotton shirt, cotton has a big footprint in the world. Did you know it requires over 700 gallons of water to grow enough cotton for a single t-shirt? Cotton historically has had a lot of bad names. Um, it's been called a thirsty crop. It's also been one of the traditionally highest pesticide users in the state of California and also used some of the most toxic chemicals that are used in agriculture. Worldwide, more pesticides are sprayed on cotton than any other crop, except in places like this. Here, farmers are on the road to sustainability. We've been working with California cotton farmers to reduce their pesticide use. Marsha Gibbs is the executive director of the Sustainable Cotton Project, and we're hitching a ride with the nonprofit to find out how they're doing it. All right, guys, it's time for us to load up and head out. Let's go see some cotton. It looks like we've arrived at our first destination just in time. What you see here is a field ready to, ready to harvest. And soon, these machines will go into action. It's time for the harvest to begin, here and across the valley. These huge tractors weave up and down the fields, picking cotton row by row. The SCP says cotton cultivation uses about 11% of the world's pesticides, and some of those are classified as carcinogens by the Environmental Protection Agency. Cotton has, has always been one of the most toxic. It started out with the boll weevil and, and ways to try to kill that. That's this critter, beetles that just love to munch on cotton buds and flowers. They brought the U.S. cotton industry in the South to its knees in the 1920s. So when synthetic chemicals came around during World War II, Guess what farmers used to get rid of their problem pests? People were just basically spraying fields without any idea what or why was out there. In the late 70s, people started to wise up. The U.S. government got a successful eradication program going. The idea was to start using nature to control things. One of the things we really try and stress is that it's a biological system and that there are good bugs and then there are the pest bugs out there. And a cotton field will have a very large number of beneficial natural enemies that will manage the key pests, which would include a whitefly, aphids. It's called integrated pest management, a way to control pests using as little insecticide as possible while still growing a high quality crop. It's Dr. Peter Goodell's specialty at University of California Cooperative Extension. You have to one, get out here frequently, look at the field, monitor the pest, identify the pest, assess the pest, and then start making some decisions about how you're going to manage it. Integrated pest management takes more effort because workers have to spend more time in the field to keep pests in check. Sustainable is, is slightly more labor intensive. That brings us to Chad Crivelli. He's a third generation farmer in Dos Palos, California. And he's turned to the Sustainable Cotton Project to make changes at his family's farm. They saw the need here in the San Joaquin Valley to you know, clean up the environment, the air quality especially. By helping farmers reduce or eliminate the most toxic chemicals, we're reducing the load of chemicals that would be running off or volatizing into the air. And that way we're protecting not just the soil and the water, but we're protecting human health as well. Crivelli also uses hedgerows, natural barriers that help keep the number of pests down since they attract wildlife and predators. We've seen a lot of wildlife that we, we hadn't seen in years, um, pheasants and quail returning that, uh, you know, uh, haven't been in my lifetime in the last 30 years. California's gone a long way to clean up its crop using this method. In general, in a cotton field like this, uh, it, it's never going to be pesticide free, but we can get it down to uh, the minimal number, which in California it generally is about one to maybe two applications, as maybe as much as four applications in a single year. In other places around the world, it could be as many as 15. It's a toxic mess for the planet and people. You know, we're promoting healthy communities and we do that simply by reducing the chemical use of the workers, of their families, of the farmers. And last up, the gin. It's where the cotton goes after it's harvested. Let's go check it out. It's a noisy place too, where there's a lot going on. This is where the lint gets separated from the cotton. Lint is the product that comes off of the seed 
which the textile mill is looking for to make the yarns and the fabrics. Mike Davis keeps everything running smoothly out here as the gins manager. Cotton arrives in these modules. We actually break it up, we send it into a hopper and then to a drying unit where we dry the fiber. At 200 degrees, the heat helps separate the lint from the other particles textile manufacturers don't want. Then the lint gets cleaned, the seeds get separated and sent through tubes to end up here. All of it's used for something. Tell us about what those excess pieces are used for. Okay, well the, the seed cotton goes primarily to dairies for feed, it's high in protein. Even the so-called leftover trash from the whole process can be used in compost. It's a good potassium and nitrogen source. Back inside, the lint goes through what's called comer saws. Then it's bailed up, tagged and bagged. In the end, we have growers who've produced a crop that we believe is cleaner. It's off to the textile companies who will use it to make the shirt on your back. But it's always important to remember where it came from and how it was grown. The cotton clothing we wear really does come from somewhere, and it comes from these people who actually are out here in the, in the farmlands growing it, and we work closely with them to make sure that that's grown in a, in a, in a safe and, and responsible way so that your t-shirts and your clothing uh, is uh, having at least minimal impact on the environment around. Pride is the emotion. Um, it's just a proud feeling to know that it's, it's getting actually recognized and other people do appreciate it. And the Sustainable Cotton Project hopes more and more of that cotton is grown sustainably. Mm -hmm.